Millennials born between 1982 and 2004 are the most sought after demographic in the United States. And now, according to the Census Bureau, they are the largest. Candidates are courting their vote and, and places like Facebook and Twitter, they thrive on millennial usage. But the big question is, what's important to them and what are they really talking about online? We asked a group of millennials to follow the big news stories of this week and post their thoughts. And guess what? They are here with us in uh, the social circle. A Welcome highly all social of you guys. circle today. Yes, a very, it's actually the social circle today. Now, we do know it's summertime, social. which, of course, means that school is out for all of you guys. But we gave you a bit of a homework assignment, and we wanted to get your thoughts. I want to jump right into it. I'm going to start with you, Jillian. A lot of big news over the last couple of weeks, like the historical SCOTUS decision, of course, five to four, in favor of same-sex marriage. And you tweeted, legal action won't fix the LGBT teen's rejection by family and peers results in 41% attempted suicide rates versus 1% for the general pop. So you're saying that there's still a problem and that families aren't accepting their gay and lesbian children. And this legal action may be a step in the right direction, but it doesn't address that. So how do we fix that particular problem? Because you weren't celebrating quite as much as everyone else was. No, I just think that the announcement by SCOTUS last week um, kind of made people think that pro-marriage was synonymous with being anti-homophobic. And I don't think that's true. And I think there are deeper issues that aren't being addressed and are still present. Um, like I tweeted, 41% um, of homeless or of LGBT teens have attempted suicide versus 1% of the general population. Right. And almost half of homeless teens identify as LGBT. And that's because of rejection by family, rejection by peers. Um, even it comes, becomes a downward spiral with turns to drugs, alcohol, and abuse. And so I think that there is something that needs to be addressed that's beyond the action by SCOTUS and gay marriage. Yeah, going back to family values, which right. we talk about so often in this country. All right, Quinn, you, now you talked about Confederate flags, another yeah. big topic for the last couple of weeks, yeah. of course, on the heels of the Charleston shooting. You tweeted this, whether it be the rainbow flag or the Confederate flag, we all have our own personal beliefs and opinions. And then Alexis, you also tweeted about the Confederate flag. You said, I support individuals' rights to fly the Confederate flag, but Stone Mountain is a symbol of Georgia and should represent all citizens, of course, on the heels of Georgia saying, the Confederate flag will continue to fly at Stone Mountain. So you guys both agree that we have personal beliefs in these countries and we are able to exercise those personal beliefs, but not necessarily on, on public ground, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. And why is that? Why do you think that? I think, and especially Stone Mountain and a lot of our government buildings, they represent the whole state. Mm -hmm. And it's fine for individuals, I don't care, you can fly whatever flag you want to fly, but when we're talking about state property, we're, rep we're representing the entire state. Stone Mountain is representative of our entire population, and not everyone in the population wants that flag. But quickly, some would say, though, uh, Quinn, that, you know, if you're walking by someone's home and they're flying a Confederate flag and your ancestors have been persecuted by those that ran the Confederacy, that hurts them, you know, and that's a representation of a very dark time in African-American history. I think flags, they're meant to re represent things, I think that one flag could mean something to one person. I think the flag does represent horrible things that have happened, but it also represents a lot of people's heritage, mm -hmm. and it means different things to different people. So I think as long as it's not flown over a government building, mm -hmm. people should be able to fly what flag they think. But it right. seems as though both of you aren't, um, you know, aren't, aren't necessarily incapable of sympathizing with why other people would feel the way that they do about even privately not having people fly that flag, yeah. right? Exactly. I okay. definitely understand that. Yeah. I, think, I think it's a personal issue that everyone needs to work harder to understand. Most definitely. Rashad, I want to turn my attention to you now. You know, you went to Facebook and, and you put up this post bringing up another major news story, which of course was that as the Confederate flags are coming down, the churches are being terrorized in the South in reference to these church fires. And, you know, we've certainly covered those church fires uh, in the media, but you said that the story didn't receive enough attention for you. No, I think um, that it's a very common thing, especially amongst African Americans in the country, that it, we don't feel as if it hasn't uh, garnered enough attention. For example, if a CVS burned, or maybe if they had CVS signs over the church buildings, maybe the media would be down there, like on the spot, like on site, all day, like every day, like it was in Baltimore. And maybe the president would bring himself to the podium to denounce them as thugs and criminals. But there's more so silence. I've seen more about shark attacks um, well, but than the church being uh, domestically terrorized. And it's very problematic because we can see exactly what happened in the wake of the, the last massacre when these flags are beginning to come down. It's only been like a week and like seven charges have been burnt down. But, but Rashad, to be fair, I mean, we did do a considerable amount of coverage in, in Charleston. And we did have a lot of really open conversations about what went on there. And the president did speak um, at, the, uh, at the funeral services for Pastor Pinckney. So, you know, what more do you think, think could have been done? 
Well, you said Charleston, and that's and that's wonderful. But there was one in Macon, Georgia. There was one in Tallahassee, Florida. Right. There was one in, in uh, North Carolina this past week. You're talking about the church fire. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I mean, there's been multiple, and that's the whole point. If there were seven cathedrals burnt, I think the entire country right. mm -hmm. would be on yeah. a complete standstill and halt. It would be yeah. an immediate red terror alert. Like, oh my God, seven cathedrals are burnt down. Yeah. But or the if same, it was caused by point. ISIS. Right. Yeah. If it was caused by ISIS, point. I think there's yeah. a big difference between how we consider domestic terrorism and international yeah. terrorism. Yeah. Very good point. All right, Drea. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. He has entered. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> he has entered the race, and we're not talking about his hair. Mm -hmm. We have 14 Republican candidates uh, running for president, um, and you made a YouTube video about all this. Let's take a look, and then we're going to talk about it. I think it's great that he has been dropped, and I think that it's great for that ethnic group to basically act swiftly to see that business ties are cut. So of course you're talking about the fact that so many, uh, you know, Macy's for instance has drop, dropped Donald Sorta. Trump. Uh, NBC. Uh, yeah, NBC yeah. has dropped Donald Trump. Uh, the Apprentice dropped, yeah. dropped Donald Trump because of his comments about uh, a Mexican saying that they are drug dealers mm -hmm. and rapists. Um, what do you think the appeal is of Donald Trump? He's bombastic. <laughs> yeah. And I like him because I know where he stands. There are so many people who smile on your face but have different intentions with donald trump you know exactly where he stands and for that i like him i don't like his policies i don't subscribe to them but i know what type of man i'm dealing with up front do you think he could legitimately run this country absolutely not okay <laughs> i was like well where yeah, are you going with like, this <laughs> you know, you know, and, and, and this this to me know. is what i think i love most about millennials there seems to be uh, uh, more of a capacity to see both sides of an argument and to be more centered yes, and to absolutely. be more neutral. And, and that was an example of it right there, where, where you're saying, you know, at least I know where he stands. And from a political standpoint, is that what frustrates millennials you feel like? Is you feel like politicians are, are not, you don't know where they stand? They're not transparent yeah. necessarily. Yeah. Lack of or they, yeah. or they switch right. stances after they get in the office. Yeah, of yeah. yeah they do and say what they need to do. Before, before we let you guys go, I want one word. Right now, if you had to vote, who would you vote for? Right now, one, just give me the name. We'll go through it. Hillary. Hillary. Oh. Rashad. Uh, Hillary. 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 I don't know yet. I'm gonna have to <laughs> okay. think about it. Okay. You're still thinking about it. <laughs> Cruz. Cruz. Yeah. Wow. Cruz. I like that you Look said that. that. After you heard all that Hillary, you still want the truth. It's good <laughs> for you for standing yeah. up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you guys all for joining us. That was really enjoyable. We really appreciate it. We hope you, yeah. you come back and bring us more.